Okay, welcome back. Let's jump right into it. Last we left off was chapter 63. Pretty much at the end, Pina was just getting on Lagosi's nerves, and Lagosi is tr currently training under Goheen to master, well, to get a better grip on his predatory instincts, and that involves resisting, sitting in a locker, resisting uh, eating a big slab of meat. So, for this cover page, in chapter 64, a dancer does not need pointed shoes. Ooh, who is this? Okay, so this is a new character that's being introduced, so let's see how it goes. Where are we? It looks like it's some kind of dressing room here. Hmm. A dancer? Like an actress or something? Okay, so Cosmo, we've got a full house tonight. I guess they see your show as the main event. In the oh, in the waiting room of a strip club. Okay, interesting. Okay, I could tell this is gonna be a good one, or at least I hope. <laughs> um, because I always love when we do world building uh, outside of the main uh, cast. Like we have Lego Sue, we have Louie, we have Haru, Jack. We've seen the inside of the school, but it's always a treat when we get to explore outside of the school. Like the first time we left the school was when the back alley market got introduced and we got to see a, the darker aspect of uh, of the society they live in and how carnivores have to hide their um hide their what's it called pretty much their diet and their affinity towards eating meat right with the back alley market which sells meat so let's see both appetite and sexual desire are easy to provoke they just want something that can give them both. Appetite and sexual desire. Okay. If you're jealous of my popularity, then try to see if you'll be reborn as an herbivore. No thanks. I'm probably the only herbivore who's fickle enough to work in the back alley market. Okay, so that's where Cosmo is right now. What is Cosmo? Is she like a kangaroo or something? A gazelle? No, no, probably like a gazelle or something. I'm not sure. They didn't really say. Carnivores use the back alley market as an outlet for their daily frustrations. Butcheries aren't the only place they have. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Because this would most definitely... Alright, so if she's uh, stripping for carnivores as an herbivore, that would most definitely be looked down upon um, in, the, in the brighter parts of their society. But here in the back alley market, they're free to express that. So I guess it's kind of... I suppose it's kind of more even, um, kind of more, well, I guess it's a little bit more equal in a sense that she can, she's free to express herself back here, whereas I guess she wouldn't be able to, like in a, in normal everyday setting, so that's kind of interesting to think about. And this little line right here, both appetite and sexual desire are easy to provoke. That reminds me of someone. Um, if I don't lose my train of thought, I'll probably get back to this statement right here. In this strip club, when a dancer removes an article of clothes, they provoke a, a cacophony of echoes from the liberated carnivores, carnivore lust, oh, carnivore customers. That was a mouthful. Thank you all for waiting. We will end today with the performance of Cosmo, the Okapi. Please get quiet, everyone. What the heck's an Okapi? I don't know what an Okapi is. This is literally the first time I've heard that. Okay. Well, let me take a look at the crowd. Okay, so it's literally all carnivores here. So this is supposed to be a carnivore. I'm guessing this strip club is actually carnivore dominated. So she must be a out Cosmo must be an outlier being an herbivore that's doing this. Okay, interesting. It is strongly prohibited to put your hands inside the cage. Well, beasts. Okay, I've seen. Okay, I've seen a show like this before, so I hope it doesn't get too graphic. Otherwise, yeah. So, doing this job is extremely dangerous because what we know about uh, the society in, inside Beastars predatory. Uh, what's it called? Predatory offenses happen uh, frequ quite frequently, and it's actually shown on the news. In fact, the earliest chapters 
another devou uh, devouring took place, even though they were separated from it, like, it was Legacy and Jack and another one of his roommates who were playing chess or something against, uh, against Herbivore students, and then just because that happened, even though they had nothing to do with it, they were affected. So, I don't know, there are far-reaching, like, implications of whenever a devouring happens, it just puts carnivores in negative light. And I'd imagine in a place like this, in a setting like this, like, it probably would be very easy to get eaten. Because think of it like this, you know what, uh, what people who work in, like, professions like this have to deal with? Like, alright, so there are hagglers, like, in real life, and I'd imagine there are also hagglers here who are predators literally in the sense in that they, their sexual desire right can also be confused well here let me let me kind of reverse that there they mask their desire to like devour they mask their desire to eat meat and confuse it with their sexual desire and that can cause a jumbo mess that can cause someone to snap and you know cause a devouring and doesn't that sound like someone we know because this brings up questions because this was the question that um, Legosi was faced with when, who, who brought it up? Alba. It was on the rooftop, the rooftop scene. Uh, during that meeting they all had on the roof with all the carnivores from the class and stuff. Uh, when Alba called out Legosi and asked, like, isn't he just glorifying Haru, right? And I don't know if it's like a subtle undertone because, you know, that's the real question. You're like, because we're, we spend a lot of time with Legosi, right? So we have a kind of an understanding of where he's coming from as a character. But at the same time, there's always his instincts that make, seem, that make things not as he sees them as. And we kind of... And we can kind of point that out just because we have an outside perspective. And understand that Legosi, even though he means well he is also unreliable as a as a protagonist because he because he doesn't understand what like he doesn't understand himself as well as he think he does and that's why we and that's why it's refreshing to see characters like Gilwin who's a doctor who's well established with um you know within his community comfortable with his body and actually studied things to know that um to know how to help Legosi through this this period he's going through and that's also a point that Goheen made <laughs> about Legosi's fixation on an herbivore. That herbivore being Haru. Like, oh god, you fell in love with a rabbit? Like, that's just your, um, that's just your predatory instincts masking themselves as, uh, as, as, you know, I don't think he said sexual desires. I think he said, like, as a crush or something like that, but it was something along those lines. It's been a while since I read those chapters. We're, like, 64 chapters in. But it was something along those lines, so that's interesting. So anyway, to her dance. Strongly prohibited to put your hands inside the cage. Well, beast, sorry to keep you waiting. Cosmo, I've been waiting for you. Cosmo! Okay, so music starting. Okay, so... I like to see this. Um, okay, so... Because I, I know the reputation that Beastars kind of had, and I don't, I'm not sure where it actually came from, because what do people say, like furry bait and stuff like that? It really isn't that. Anything that's shown like this in Beastars isn't for, like, just fan service or whatever. There's actually a purpose for it, and they actually handle stuff, handle stuff like this really respectfully. Like, there's politics to it and stuff because of the society that they live in, but... Whenever something is shown like this, it's to make a point. And I'm even and I'm already seeing the parallels. Why do I keep going back to that? And I'm already seeing the parallels of what's already been discussed and established and seeing it and seeing it pre presented here without it being explicit. It's always implicit. And you can kind of draw your own conclusions with that, which is what I did right here from this one sentence because we've seen this before it's been said before but this is just the information being presented in a different way okay let's see the bare smell of a female herbivore with a lack of clothing is fiercer fresher and sweeter than any meat 
in butcher and butcheries. Okay, fresher than any meat in butcheries. Okay, so this is the male gaze. Cosmo, even though she's the one in a cage, right? Honestly, she reminds me of Haru, right? Because remember, uh, Haru is at her best when she's in control of the situation, right? When she, you know, she feels she's at her strongest when she she's with another person. They're they're equals, right? But we have a Dama. She feels like they're equals, but at the same time, that's kind of like just Haru asserting her dominance in a way that wouldn't be in a way that would not normally be accessible to her because of her status as you know the weak, literally the weakest herbivore in their society, the smallest and weakest at that. Right, but Cosmo, on the other hand, she has the privilege of expressing herself in a way where she can not only thrive, but dominate the herbivores. I'm not sure how she views them yet, but this is essentially her domain. She's not trapped in there with them, right? They have the they have the pleasure in the experience of watching her because she allows it, right? So let's see. I will drive you all mad with lust and appetite. Be drunk from the irregular pattern on my skin. You're all watching me and I am watching all of you. The way I see it, you're the ones in the cage. I'm the ruler, I, the ruler of this domain. There it is, Cosmo. All right, so they're cheering for Cosmo. Cosmo, you're the greatest, Cosmo. Good job out there. Okay, so yeah, she did her thing, and yeah, I'm pretty concerned. You know, the customers wouldn't stop yelling, "Tick the cage out!" And the cage has a lot of blind spots. Oh, so this is the manager. Why is a little guy the manager of a place like this? That's kind of <laughs> unexpected, but let's be star subverting expectations again. <laughs> hmm, the customers were well mannered, but still, for the most part. But I could, but I can't help but worry. She looks and she's like, "I'm not worried." Actually, let's put an end to this. I don't want to see another dancer get eaten on stage by a customer gone berserk. Who's saying that? So it's the manager saying that? Okay, so that's happened before. I wonder how many devourings have taken place in there. Because uh, Carnivore got a little too excited by an herbivore. And just decided to like eat them in a fit of like madness or whatever. I wouldn't even say madness. Just like a fit of instinct. Because all the carnivores that come here... If you notice, if they hang out in the back alley market, they're undoubtedly eating meat, right? And what we know about that is they go through meat withdrawal from time to time, right? So, and they hang out in places like this. They come here to essentially unwind, right? Because they live in a, they live in a society where they're constantly being suppressed. So it makes sense why they would have an episode in a place like this. Like a teen, like say like, like you see it all the time in real life as well. Teenagers who have strict parents, um, you know, and have like strict communities, and finally when they go off to college, they get a bit of freedom and they absolutely go wild during their first party and drink too much and end up blacked out. Wake up the next day wondering what happened and find out a whole lot of mistakes were made. This is that, just in like a more extreme sense. So, I forgot all about it. Two years ago, there was another herbivore performer, Adele, but she died. A herbivore in the back alley market dances with death every day, so it's not surprising. Alright, my makeup's gone. Time to smoke. Okay. So this reminds me a lot of Haru's situation as well. Although, you know, Haru, like, dances with danger, like, on her own, though. Especially by hanging out with Legosi, but she doesn't care. But characters have their own individual agency, and that's what I like. Like, she knows this is probably, this probably isn't a good idea, what she's doing, but she just doesn't care. She's going to do it anyway. I would like to find out why. Because, uh, characters, 
it feel, I like how it feels very real that even like like we're getting introduced to a another minor character like this but clearly they have their own life going on outside of you know the life of the main uh the main cast members and that's refreshing to see it you know makes the world feel alive and lived in if you look at this panel right here I'm going to squeeze out money from the carnivores here while I'm still alive. And when my time's up, I'm going to die by being mauled to death. So that's her viewpoint of things, which is pretty dark, but it's pretty realistic given what we know. <laughs> so she kind of just accepts that that's probably how it's going to be. But that's the sad part, though. It doesn't have to be this way, but it is. And she just kind of accepts her reality. Yeah, the reality of where she lives. So, yeah, that's pretty sad. Oh, it's Louie. Okay. I can't believe I didn't notice before. I thought I was like, those horns look familiar. And I keep forgetting about Louie. He's off doing his own thing. He's like the protagonist of his own story. Like, living a separate life from Legacy right now. Because I've. It's been a while, but he left school. That's right. So he's uh, with the Shishigumi right now. So, he's chilling here, in the back alley market. Huh. Interesting. Who are you? What's an herbivore like you doing here? He looks like he's in his teens. What the hell? Did this young deer come here out of adolescent curiosity? I like how they just recognize immediately that Louis just a kid. What's your problem? There are two types of asshole customers that I've always had to deal with in my eight year career. Eight year? Okay. Carnivores who genuinely pity me and herbivores who come to ridicule me. Okay. So. Interesting. Carnivores who pity me. Herbivores who come to ridicule me. That's a. That's just like Haru to be perfectly honest and maybe this is, a, this is a reflection of what Haru could end up as you know because yeah verbatim that's something Haru would say I don't know who you are but you'll get eaten alive if you stay in these parts just go home it must be way past your bedtime before we continue, I want to go back to something. There's something that looked very familiar, because now that I think back to the earlier chapters... Oh, is this one of Legacy's classmates? Because I know one of one of his classmates, I think it was a cheater or something, they actually worked in a place like this. I think it was during the chapter where uh, the mongoose was describing everyone's backstory and past, and I believe the cheetah girl, I forget her name, but she was like a dominatrix. I'm wondering if that's her. And if she still does that job. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, so maybe it connects. Maybe it doesn't. Just something I noticed. Anyway, she storms off. Uh, I'm so pissed. I've got enough to worry about with my next job. What's her next job? Sorry to keep you waiting. You're wonderful today. Wonderful today. So it's like a customer or... Thanks for texting me beforehand. Let's go, shall we? So is she like a escort? And what's this? Easy money, 2,000 yen per hour, passing out stickers and journalizing. 220,000 yen per month, two holidays every week. That's interesting. Stuff like that makes the world feel alive. This, these posters. I'm keeping this a secret from the strip club. There are there aren't many strippers who would turn down a chance at getting money from a customer. Oh my god. Okay, so... Okay, male's restroom. Okay, so she might be an escort. Um, she might do that in her in her uh, free time. Her spare time. Um, after she finishes working at the strip club. And... That's a... That, that's... If it is what I think it is... It's dangerous because... If the implication right here, you're wonderful today, that this is someone she knows, right? They clearly have each other's numbers that she's been seeing, 
and it is a carnivore, right? So that's dangerous in and of itself. This is like a whole new level. It's like a, a 10 on the danger scale right now. So let's see. This male spectacle bear has taken a liking to me. This is the 10th time we've met. 10th? Ah, you're so good at this. Okay. Okay, that's where this is going right now. 10th time we've met, I'm not oblivious to this kind of service. But the thing is, every time we meet, he clutches my head with stronger force. Okay, so that's what's happening right now. Okay, B-Stars. Okay, so this isn't really a problem because it's it's setting something up, right? Let's find out what it is. My question is, why does she why does she put herself in situations like this? Again, I don't I would say it really doesn't matter too much because once again, this is legacy story, right? And and characters like this, like secondary characters, not even secondary characters, um, I'll just say other characters like this, stand to just build the world around Lego C. You know? They have their own thing going on, so I guess it doesn't matter right now. Or maybe we'll find out, we'll see. Sir, why do you like doing this, even though I'm an herbivore and you're a carnivore? Huh? Is it out of appetite? Lust? Why do I turn you on? Okay, so that's a very good question. And that's something, and even though this is, this is, these aren't characters we're familiar with, this is the question we should be, we should always ask ourselves whenever Legosi interacts with Haru, right? Because even though, I, I keep, I'm gonna keep saying it, because even though Legosi is well-intentioned, there's always that, there's always that, that, what's it called, that sense of danger right behind Lego C, right? Because it's not too hard to imagine Haru being in a position like this, because Haru has been in positions like this before. This could easily, this could easily be Haru one day. Maybe. You know, we don't know, but it's a very real possibility given what we know about the character. She's been in Love Hotel, she's slept around, so I don't know. It's just easy to see Haru. And that question should be directed at Lego C. Anyway, Cosmo, does desire need any distinction in where we are right now? A male bathroom? Oh, huh? Okay, so what the heck? Oh, he brought her there to eat her. Because this is the 10th time, right? So that's why his grip is getting stronger. That's what she said. Like he's getting more and more aggressive with her. I see now. Today is the day that I die. What do you think, Cosmo? Okay. Okay, so he brought her there to finally eat her. So that, so this entire time, his lust was actually his desire just to devour. Because remember what like, he said before? He, even though he was adamant, like it was during the Shishigumi fight, even though he was adamant that, you know, he loved Haru and he wanted to save her, when push came to shove, and he, he dropped his, like, fake hate in his mask, and he said, Haru is my prey? This is that. This could easily be those two. And it's scary to think about that. This can be him, this could be Legosi, and this could be Haru. Alright, that's... Oh, the boys, they're here. Oh, that's sick. Is that a JoJo pose? Hold up. That's awesome. This is Ibuki. That's free. I don't know the rest of the name. I think that's Dolph. No, that's Dolph. One of them are Dolph, but I know the main two. Two lions. Okay, so... Alright, that's enough. We can't let you do whatever you want here, since this strip club is part of our turf. Right, boss? Okay, that's free. Free's awesome. And then we have Ibuki over here, Jojo posing. Aw, oh, man, this is awesome. See the boys? <laughs> Squad showed up. The, the Shishigumi! Rish <laughs> Louis just such a boss. Look at him in this tux. Not a care in the world, he's just chilling. 
Restrain him. Gotcha. <laughs> and then they just beat his ass in the back. You told me to go home, didn't you, miss? This is my home. Let's get along from one herbivore to another. Saved by a dweller of darkness. To be continued in the next issue. Oh, that's awesome. See, this is dope. So I wonder if this is going to continue in the next chapter. I love seeing stuff like this. Okay. Well, I'm hyped. I love seeing... Man, this is just... Oops. This is just such a nice panel right here. Like, he's like the dark prince of the back alley market. Luis is running stuff from the shadows, which is exactly what he said he's gonna do. But just seeing the boys right here, like, this is just such a strong image whenever they're together. Luis at his best when he's in spots like this. Center stage. This is his show, and he's gonna make sure you know it. Man, he, I swear, I swear, Luis, like, how do I describe him? He's like the protagonist of an anime that we just missed, honestly. So, let's see how it goes. I can't wait for the next chapter. I will see you then. If you like this video, you know, comment, rate it, subscribe. Um, and let me know what you want to see next, or point out stuff you want me to talk about more. Alright, so, I will see you during chapter 65.